You know, immersive audio is really exciting, but it can be really difficult to wrap your brain around sometimes. That's why I'm really excited to speak with Marcella Rada. She just gave a great talk at AES about this, you know, how to get started as a beginner, what to use, what the options are. What does it all mean? All right, so stick around. We're going to learn together. Here we go. Hey, welcome back to the Adam Claremont Show. I'm your host, Adam Claremont. Who else would it be? I know, I'm sorry. Anyway, here we talk about how to build and grow your career in audio with actionable tips for myself and today, actionable tips from somebody else that I'm really excited to talk to. But before we begin, let's talk about that business. If you're trying to get to the next step in your business, in your studio, in your career, if you're looking around, just don't know how to get more clients or just you don't know how to track or get the clients that you're really after those next level clients. I've got a free gift for you, adamclaremont.com slash client list. Go grab that free PDF guide. It's an easy, simple step-by-step -step guide on things that you can put into play today to start getting those clients that you're after and just doing you know, what we want to do, which is working in audio with some awesome people. So my gift to you would love for you to have it. Yeah. So let's dive in now with the show. So my guest today is Marcella Rada. She's an audio engineer with a really deep background in immersive 3D, ambisonics audio, really just like all of those audio things that everyone's just trying to wrap their brains around right now. So very topical, very important. She's also a professor at Algonquin College in Ottawa, Canada. Marcella, thank you so much. Really, really excited to be speaking to you today. Hi, Adam. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm always talking about LinkedIn on the show and the people that I meet, and you are just one of the masterminds that I found on LinkedIn. Um, you know, you poked out, LinkedIn said, you need to know this person. <laughs> thank you, LinkedIn, for the introduction. Um, yes, if you're not on LinkedIn, you, LinkedIn, it's working. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> if you're not on there, you got to get on there because it's, it's putting me in contact with some brilliant people, yourself included. Um, but just it really got me excited to to reach out to you because you've just got so much great information um, and then clear, you're just clearly a boss about immersive audio right now, which is like the next thing. It's not the next thing. It's here. But it's really to me, it's like, well, we'll get into it. I don't want to put away. But before we get into it, you can see how excited I am about this topic. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into it, uh, maybe do me a favor. Why don't you just introduce yourself really quick and give maybe a quick background uh, about what you're up to and kind of how you got there and, and how you really got into immersive. Sure. Um, well, Adam, I have a very academic background. I have a Bachelor of Music with a major in digital audio arts from the University of Lethbridge and um, a master's in music production technology and innovation, as well as a post-master's fellowship in academic technology from Berkeley College of Music. So all of this education uh, has allowed me to uh, immerse in this journey, which is, you know, immersive audio. And, yeah. um, and I, you know, I am an audio engineer, but more than that, I am an educator. And so I, I very much enjoy research. And I do all of this research with the purpose of sharing the knowledge, really. I like to find out tools uh, that are accessible to students, and I like to provide them with tools, inspire them, and then, you know, send them to the wild to create, to innovate. And this is a great, great time for audio and to be innovative. I think people, you know, musicians, producers, mixing engineers, everyone can be an innovator right now. Um, and so it's really, really cool that um, a lot of technology is being developed um hardware and software so uh yeah i'm i'm very very passionate about new technology and uh what is going to tell you about me yes i am based in canada uh born in colombia though and um i've, I've I have a yeah a wide background of recording and mixing for independent artists uh bands orchestras symphonies etc and uh I also like and enjoy um, developing video um, 
you know, uh, immersive experiences. So I, I also produced 360 videos and I got into that wow. when I go into special audio, right? Because, um, I, and I guess I should mention that my master's thesis focused on uh, the application of spatial audio uh, for social media platforms and VR. And so um, I've created immersive environments with 360 videos or in video game engines. So that's another uh, whole area that can be explored. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. That's awesome. That's really cool. So let, carrying on with that thought that you just mentioned, you know, with, with immersive and, and talking about social media, could you give me an idea and give us an idea? Just, I mean, people know that you, you know, there, there's invert, uh, immersive audio applications for things like film and television, obviously video games and things like that. Um, you touched on social media. I know Facebook is huge push uh, with immersive. Can you Give us any other maybe mediums that we might see it in that maybe isn't included in that list. Yes. Um, so special audio is being used a lot in um, storytelling. So mm. radio plays, podcasts, um, and documentaries. Uh, for example, Felix and Paul, their studio based in Montreal, and they create really amazing, impressive uh, documentaries, uh, 360 video and immersive audio. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, music. Music is now being mixed in, right. in 360 and streaming platforms are adapting to it. Apple, Spotify, Tidal, uh, they are uh, adapting to it. Actually, Apple just a couple of weeks ago released uh, that the, the, their special audio format and they're not charging extra, which is huge yeah. uh, for streaming platforms. So, uh, you know, it's not just about creating uh, an immersive experience for uh, something that has visuals, but uh, by music is, and, and you spoke about this at the beginning, um, it is, it is our, the new format and, you know, how we adapted from mono to stereo. I, I do think that in, in the next couple of years, we'll, we'll adapt to, to 360 audio. Yeah. So, yeah, well, let, let's go there too, though. So, you know, I kind of, you know, think personally like it, it just reminds me of what we went through in the in the 90s so the advent of digital audio workstations it's not apples to apples but the but the, the point i'm making is you know there was a point in the 90s where digital audio workstations were just coming out you know digital audio recording was new ish mm -hmm. and people really did not want to latch on in the very beginning not everybody else there were clearly some early adopters but there was this whole thing where people in studios with tape were like, I work with tape. It sounds so much better. And they weren't necessarily wrong or, you know, entitled to that opinion. But what happened was we saw some people in some studios and some companies just sort of die. It, might, it was kind of slow because the, the culture, companies, brands, the people with money wanted to create content, whatever that content was, they were really wanting the digital audio workstation. There was certain work that could be done quicker. And the people who didn't adopt just sort of faded away mm -hmm. or they were kind of late to the party and were just so, okay, finally I give in. It might've been a little bit too late for some of them. They lost so many clients. Mm -hmm. I kind of see a parallel that might be happening here where people, and I, I think there's a lot of people really interested and excited. I think from that group, there's fewer people who are actually getting into it. Mm -hmm. And then in that group, there's some people who are like, I think it's really cool, but I've got so much money invested in my thing right now, the stereo thing. And I'm worried that pretty soon clients are going to say, hey, along with the stereo mix or the five one mix, I need an Atmos. And by the way, I shouldn't have to pay anymore. That's a whole other conversation, but I understand what they're worried about. But there again, mm -hmm. I'm seeing people say, I've got too much invested in this. I can't go invest in that. Whatever. But the whatever to me is risky because that whatever is going to be, no, this is the first thing that we want. And then if you want to throw in stereo, that's fine. Like, I think that the immersive format is going to be, like you just mentioned a few years. I don't know how soon, but it's I, that's my opinion. I think it's going to be coming. And I think there's going to be some people that are just left holding mm -hmm. the bag and kind of stuck. Do, do you see it that way? Or do you have any thoughts there? 
Yes. So I think like everything, it takes time for people to adapt. Um, And accessibility plays a huge role in this process. So, uh, and education as well, because not everybody knows what this is about. Not everybody um, understands uh, the difference. And I'm talking about the common listener, right? Not just us, audio engineers, right, yeah, we hear it. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the common listener would say, well, why would I want this, uh, you know, for my, why would I pay more for it? Or, you know, so I, how can I experience it? Of course, headphones. Um, and so... Uh, it, it does come with a long way of adapting to it, learning about it, and having access to the material, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when it comes to, you know, you, you see, when you mentioned that you see uh, parallel uh, things happening, um, I think that the main difference, you know, adapting from tape to to a digital uh, to, to to DAWs, um, using a, a digital audio workstation allowed for a faster, more you know efficient uh, process of recording. Right? Didn't necessarily sound better at the time. Right. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And so that's the, that was a big decision that they made at the time. Like, are we trying to save money? Are we trying to be quicker? Is it, you know, the process was different. Now, when it comes to spatial audio, we do hear a huge difference in, in, in audio quality when it comes to being able to use a 360 sound field, right? Yeah. So, um, so when it, when when you show a demo it, it's you know it's obvious the difference is obvious you hear audio moving you can spatialize audio in a way that you know you can't do with just stereo so i think um the, the difference there is that you can really hear it and and it's just it is definitely a step up while at the time going from tape to to DAWs wasn't you know, that there were pros and cons. Now, when it comes to spatial audio, I don't really see a huge list of cons, really. All you have to do is learn how to to, um, spatialize audio, localize your sound sources in the 3D sound field. Uh, And of course, you know, being able to experience it with headphones or an arrangement of speakers. But ambisonic audio can be decoded for any number of speakers. So... There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, yeah, I think it wouldn't be too hard to, to hear the difference. And for someone that has been uh, teaching this subject, it's also not hard to learn. And the tools are out there. The tools are accessible and there are free tools or very cheap tools that you can get started with. So in okay. my opinion, there is no excuse to not get into it. <laughs> Excellent. I'm so glad to hear you that. Yeah, because I, yeah, I just I don't want people who are worried about saying, "Well, I've invested in this, and now you want me to invest in that." Well, I think yeah. I mean, it's everyone's decision where they put their money, right? I think you just made a good point. There, there's like no downside to this except for sure the people who have to create it, which is sort of incumbent on us as the creators, right? We're not necessarily the ones who are paying for, right? When I'm talking, you know, our audience here is a lot of engineers, right? So. If people are coming to us and they say, hey, we need spatial audio, we need immersive audio or whatever, and maybe in a minute we'll maybe talk about if there's a difference there, what those differences are. Let's let's talk about, let's set their mind at ease talking about the investment in hardware, software, and that sort of thing. So let's say here I am in my studio. I've decided, okay, this is just something I've got to do. So Marcella, where should I start? What do I need to buy? What's the best way to get started and, and go in there? Okay, well, maybe I'll just start with a very beginner level, right? Which sure. is um, your DAW. So most DAWs out there support Ambisonics. Um, so Pro Tools, Reaper, Nuendo, and uh, even Ableton Live. So uh, if you got one of those, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> and I would hope that you got one of those already. <laughs> you're probably, yeah, yeah, I think we're probably okay there. All right. So now when it comes to plugins, there are quite a few free plugins out there that you can get started with. Um, Now, MBO has uh, one plugin that is very basic, uh, but it just allows you to 
to specialize down in, you know, in a 360 field, but it's, it's pretty basic. Uh, there are other free plugins. Um, there is a suite by uh, I, I, hold on, I, I, E, M. Uh, the IEM plugin suite uh, allows for Ambisonic plugins up to seventh order. And well, maybe seventh order doesn't make sense for some people right now, but uh, but Ambisonic's uh, more channels. Seventh order would allow you to capture even more channels with more capsules um, in an Ambisonic okay. microphone. Um, now, so that's the Institute of Electronic Music and Acoustics, and they have a free plugin suite. Uh, one that I really like to show people is the Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation. And uh, this is like the best kept secret, I feel like. It's out there, man. It's out there. And it's been out there for a long time, too, been, which is even crazier. It's been out there for a very long time. Yeah. And I love, love, love their signal film. Um, it can be, you know, used. Um, and Pro Tools or Reaper. However, if you are using Pro Tools, you do need to have Pro Tools Ultimate. Uh, so if you don't, uh, Reaper is a very, very accessible tool. Uh, and I, I love Reaper, actually. Reaper is pretty cool and uh, pretty easy to use and figure out. So um, when I do teach uh, this uh, techniques, I start with Reaper and the Facebook 360 Special Workstation. Um, this plugin suite has a template that you literally open in your DAW and it already has everything routed for you. Uh, so it's super, super straightforward. Um, when it comes to localizing sound, as soon as you look at the plugin, it's very you know user-friendly and right away, once you, well, if you're using a, a mono source, right, you're able to move it around in the 360 uh, sound field and you can, you know, hear exactly where it's going. Um, so that in a nutshell is just super easy. Uh, then they support- to, for Sorry, just to interrupt really quick, just to make sure, you, and you're talking right now about people listening over headphones, right? Yes, yes. So yes. we're not even getting into so, like know, the millions of, right? Yeah, just to and, make sure that everyone's clear. And I would start with headphones yeah. for sure. Um, and um, yes, <laughs> I would start with headphones, uh, <laughs> but because really you, the, that's when, that's what I use anyways, uh, headphones, head tracker to, to really, uh, to, to localize sound signals and, and that specific place where I want them to be. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm talking headphones. Uh, now, so you would play with mono signals and then if you do have ambisonic recordings and for those who don't know what an ambisonic recording is, uh, you know, it's, it's recording made with an ambisonic microphone and an ambisonic microphone uh, could have a first order ambisonic microphone would have four capsules. And those four capsules capture X, Y, and Z. So, so they, they'll capture up, down, left, back, front, and back. And so an X, so the, I guess the main difference with an ambisonic microphone is that it gives you that Z axis, meaning elevation, which we do not get with a regular stereo recording. Right. So people are probably familiar with the binaural head that Neumann came out with. All right, this is right. a little bit different, a little more intense. Yeah. Well, so the binaural format is what you would eventually decode to, right? So after you have, you know, your whole mix ready, uh, it would be, let's call it rendered to, to an ambisonic format that can then be experienced with headphones. Right. Uh, so well, not ambisonic, sorry, I meant to say binaural, binaural format. Uh, so the binaural format is what would allow you to, to experience it through headphones. Um, so, um, but yes, yeah, so with, with a binaural head where you can record audio, uh, the, the idea is to record it exactly the same way that a human head would perceive it, right? Uh, and that's how I got started with immersive audio using a binaural head, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so, yeah, I guess, yeah. So when it comes to tools, I'll just recap. Uh, any DAW, but Reaper is one of the most accessible ones. Um, and then when it comes to plugins, I would I would get started with uh, with the Facebook 360 Spatial Workstation. Um, and just because 
like I mentioned, it has a template and that specific template really shows a uh, signal flow. So when, where it goes, how it's processed and it even has a loudness meter, which other plugins do not have. So, so that we're talking in software environments right now. Um, I don't know if it's different for each format you just mentioned, but like, for example, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Dolby Atmos, which has the renderer and it renders to an Atmos. It's a proprietary Atmos file, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the deliverable using Atmos. What, what are these file formats um, exporting out to? Is it a wave? Is it a proprietary file format? Well, yeah, so it depends on uh, how it's meant to be experienced. But when it comes to, like I mentioned, ambisonic audio, uh, it'll play in any ar like arrangement of speakers, right? Uh, because it is a 360 field, so it'll just go where it needs to go. Um, normally, though, um, after you've created your special audio mix, it will just look like a stereo mix, right? Um, and that's what a binaural format audio file would look like. It's just two channels. Um, but then perceived it's right. Exactly. Yeah. In the headphone. Yeah. And this is, I mean, this is very clearly the leg up over surround sound, just what surround sound never achieved. Right. Because that format's been around for, she's probably close to 40 years at this point, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And it just had, it always had the hurdle of the hardware, you know, the user experience was limited by what you had in the house or wherever you went, you know, this doesn't have that limit anymore, which is again, yeah, no more con there, right? Exactly. And then the, that's one of the biggest advantages of, of this audio format is that it can be experienced by anyone that has a pair of headphones, right? Uh, well, yeah, well, a 5.1 mix, unless you have a 5.1 setup you won't really be able to experience mm. in the way that it was meant to be experienced. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Very cool. So, so we're talking about software, right? You're talking about really some awesome options that I didn't know about. Maybe you can touch on really quickly. And this is like an, another endless topic. So maybe we won't go really in depth, but you know, right now we're talking about someone getting started and beginning, but like, if you want to go to the next level, do you want to kind of explain like what's ahead after the software? Yeah, I mean, uh, it depends on your setup and, and what you got going on, whether you have a home studio or like an actual commercial studio. Uh, but I do believe that eventually studios and and even, you know, educational institutions should have Adobe Atmo set up. And I guess once you are ready to take that step, uh, you need to be ready to make some uh, changes to your studio uh, because you do have to meet certain qualifications. And this is a setup that is it's not cheap, um, mm. so you do have to, you know, be ready with your budget. Uh, but um, reaching out to, to to experts that have already uh, designed on the Atmo setups, um, and uh, I mean, there are some very impressive. Uh, uh, studios out there that have it, uh, for example, uh, Stamp Studios in, in Amsterdam has a very, very uh, cool one. So anyways, uh, okay. and I know that, <laughs> you know, the person that designed that one is, you know, a, a, an amazing uh, professional. So, uh, I mean, if it was up to me, I would reach out to one of these people that really have a lot of experience doing that. Um, right. yeah. And uh, Good to know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so meeting the, the, yeah, you do need to meet certain qualifications and depending on the size of your studio and what you're able to, to accommodate for, then uh, you can probably adapt to, to your own setup. Uh, but that's, that's where I would go after. So, yeah, so, so nothing too uh, new in the world of audio. That's right, people. You can spend money forever if you want to. So <laughs> to, to sum it up. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get back to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting started. Um, I've got the software that you recommended. Things are kind of going well. What would you recommend for like actually applying and working in it? Like maybe thoughts on, okay, I've never mixed or created in an immersive atmosphere. Should I just play with an empty palette? Should I find a video to work with? Like, what do you think? I mean, obviously you want to do both, but like, what do you think is the first go around? What would you recommend? Any thoughts? 
Um, I think the very first thing that I recommend to do is really getting to know your tools, right? Okay. And uh, critical listening, training your ear. And of course, if you are already a sound engineer, that shouldn't be a huge process for you. Um, but uh, understanding that um, it, it starts with the recording process, really. And that's something that I found out mm -hmm. through my research that uh, it does depend on what you're recording and the type of audio signals that you're dealing with. So let's say you are dealing with electronic elements, for example. Electronic elements are uh, sources that are easy to place, to localize in a 360 sound field. Well, if you have more organic elements, uh, you do need to make sure that your frequency spectrum is not all over the place, right? And if it is, you do have to find those fundamental frequencies and then, you know, clean it up in a way that your that audio signal can be placed somewhere and it's not, you know, uh, reflecting everywhere else because that will mm. take the person out of that immersive environment that you're trying to create. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so critical listening is, is important. Uh, ear training is important and understanding that it's not just, I'm going to grab this recording and I'm going to place it here and that's it. But of course, like everything, yeah, it starts with the recording process. Um, so, um, you know, if you are recording uh, multiple signals simultaneously, right, um, using microphones that are, you know, very directional microphones, cardioid pattern, um, color patterns, hypercardioid even, uh, just so you do not get bleed from other sources that will eventually be placed somewhere else, stuff like mm. that. Um, then when it comes to, let's say you do just want to get started with some signals, like some, you know, mono signals that you already have access to. Um, it, it's really cool to, like I said, uh, getting to know your tools and, and understanding what they do. So when I change elevation, if I do have a plugin that adds reverb to it, what does it do? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, so for example, the DRVR Bro, it's a plugin that does come with an ambisonic reverb. So um, before, you know, getting to mix a whole song or a whole like uh, podcast with sound effects, I will start with getting to know the tools and what they do. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, and then moving forward, I think uh, I recommend people to have a plan. So what's your plan? Where are the, the sound source is coming from? Where are they moving to? What kind of story are you trying to tell through it? Uh, and having a, a very, you know, um, I, I'd like to have a very specific plan where I know where things need to go. Uh, so having a plan and then, uh, you know, working towards that goal, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, telling the story, right. You know, creating the context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I wonder if you, I wonder if anything exists like this. I mean, you know, like we hear a lot of people like that are music mixing, getting started. And there's like a million places to go online now where you can get like full songs tracked out, you know, and people learning how to mix and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah. don't have access to, to recordings. Is there anything like that with like ambisonic recordings or things like that where people can get for like free access to some some recordings where they can start playing with? That is a great question, Adam. And I am sure that there has to be a library okay. out there. I don't have one right now because I've been fortunate enough to create my own. Okay. Um, but uh... so Marcella's library is going to be online <laughs> shortly now that she just got this new idea. <laughs> But I, I would also say that, you know, well, it depends on where you are in the world, but uh, it is possible to rent ambisonic microphones and you can, right. you know, rent one, try it out. And there is quite a few out there now. So there are different, you know, brands, companies that are developing ambisonic microphones. So um, I would just start with renting one, rent one and go in and do some, you know, recordings of whatever you feel like recording and then play with that. Um, so I think that would be, um, you know, an affordable way to start with. And uh, when it comes to video material, there is a lot of 360 videos out there that, that can be downloaded for sure. Uh, 360 cameras can be rented as well. They are pretty expensive to purchase, I would say. 
uh, but uh, but you can't rent one too. And it's cool to to you know record that 360 image and and have an ambisonic microphone that will uh, match what you've recorded. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, downloading a 360 video and then recreating uh, sound effects yourself is a really cool activity to to get started with. I'm just remembering, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a Facebook group or groups that people are sharing all their Facebook 360 videos. Oh, yeah, are, there is, have, there's a ton of groups for sure. Yeah. I, I am part Some of Some of them have the audio done right. Not all of them do, though, or at least what like I noticed. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. imagine. Yeah. Um, but I would, yeah, I would... Uh, I would check that out, go on Facebook and start searching up some 360 videos, just to even get an idea of what people are doing. Because I mean, the, you know, the tools are just inspiring so many cool new pieces of art. Yeah, you know? for sure. Uh, it's also <laughs> so. important to understand the platform that you're trying to develop content for. Um, so for example, uh, Facebook, I know for sure supports a, a second order ambisonic. Uh, audio not sure if it already went to third order uh but youtube uh i think right now still only supports first order so um it's important that you are that you know uh where your your content is going and what the specs are yeah so you're thinking a few more years and then it's all gonna be in our faces more huh uh, yeah, potentially. Yeah. I mean, I, I really do see it and I see the benefits of it. Yeah, me too. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think that's probably a good place to wrap up. Um, th thank you. That was awesome. I just, I'm really glad you're able to just share how to get started and really what's out there and start to pique people's interests. Um, sure. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I love talking about this, uh, well, I yeah. am an educator, so I like to tell. Yeah. information. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I like uh, people that reach out to me and show me what they're doing. Um, because at the end of the day, I like uh, to, to inspire new creations and innovations uh, through, you know, just education and sharing tools. So um, uh, whoever wants to, you know, reach out to me and show me what they're up to. I, I love that. There you go. Yeah. Catch her on LinkedIn. Um, that's where I found her. Um, but yeah, I would highly encourage you to <clears throat> find her on LinkedIn, give her a follow. She's got a lot of great information that she's sharing. I can also find Marcella at marcellarada.com. I'll put all that information below and I'll try and gather all the links of the things that we mentioned here and also put those in the description below just so you've got uh, some fun, fun homework ahead of you. Yeah. Uh, I highly encourage. Yeah, oh, ahead. sorry. No, I was just going to say that I'm also pretty active on Instagram. So, uh, okay. So that's another platform that I'm very, uh, you know, um, active on. All right, cool. All right, so find her on Instagram too. Um, but yeah, highly encourage you to just pick up some of these tools. A lot of them are free, um, if not for a little bit of money. But yeah, think about what's coming ahead. Let's just all be ready and just start killing it. All right. Uh, don't forget that free gift, by the way, adamclaremont.com slash client list. You can pick up that free PDF guide to help you grab some more clients if that's something that you need help with. Uh, I'd love for you to have it. Uh, but that's it for this time. Um, thank you again to Marcella. And thank you all for watching and listening. See you next time. Bye.